Congratulations! As the proud owner of a Performance Hyperbarics Portable Hyperbaric Chamber, you and your loved ones can enjoy the benefits of hyperbaric therapy wherever and whenever you want it. Please take a few moments with this DVD to learn about the setup and operation of your chamber. Corinne will help us with the presentation and Spencer will guide you through this comprehensive demonstration. Once you've unpacked your chamber and all the parts, this is what you should have. The chamber itself, the air compressor and a yellow air hose, the frame pieces, the mattress, two bolsters, an instruction manual, and a handy tube of zipper lubricant. Additional accessories, like this chamber cover, are also available. The chamber can be placed anywhere in your home or office where you have a space about 9 feet long and 3 feet wide. A standard household electric outlet should be nearby. Plug the compressor in and turn it on with this switch. You should feel air blowing out here. Now you can turn the compressor off. Attach the compressor to the chamber by connecting the yellow hose. The small connector goes here at the compressor and the large connector with the locking collar here at the chamber. Now let's inflate the chamber with no one inside. First, put the bolsters under the chamber about a third of the way from the ends. This keeps the chamber from rolling around once it's inflated. Now let's lubricate the zipper. Put a light film of the lubricant along the entire length of the outer zipper here and pull it open. To do this, Hold the fabric by the zipper with one hand to give it some tension and pull it open. The zipper may be a little stiff when it's new. If you lubricate the zipper every few uses, it will soon loosen up. Next, we have to make sure that all the valves are in the correct position. On the outside, the air outlet valve here should be closed. This is the valve that lets the person on the outside of the chamber let the air out. If it is open, then the chamber cannot inflate. This is what it looks like when it's all the way open. This is what it looks like when it's partially open. And this is what it looks like when it's closed. Be sure it's closed. Now let's check the two valves inside the chamber. The air inlet valve here, which is opposite from where the air comes in from the compressor, must be all the way open. If this valve is closed, air cannot get from the compressor to the chamber. Finally, the internal air outlet valve here must be closed. This is the valve that the person on the inside of the chamber uses to let the air out. Now, let's do a final check of the air system. Turn the compressor on and feel for air coming out through the internal air valve here. If this valve is open, you will feel a strong stream of air on your hand. If the valve is not all the way open, the airflow will be weak to non-existent, and you will hear a louder than normal sound coming from the compressor. The sound is from the compressor blow-off valve. This is the valve that lets air escape from the compressor when the air inlet valve is closed. If this happens, simply turn off the compressor and double check the hose connections here and here and make sure that the internal air inlet valve is in the open position. Now we need to close both zippers. There is an outer zipper which we have already opened but there is also an internal zipper that is not visible from the outside except as a line in the fabric. Here it is and this is what it looks like from the inside. The external zipper is the zipper that a person uses on the outside to close the chamber. The internal zipper is the zipper that a person on the inside can use to get out by themselves if they want to. Both zippers must be closed for the chamber to properly inflate. If the inner zipper is open and no one is inside, you must have the outer zipper open to reach through and close the inner zipper. To close a zipper, grab the fabric here and pull like this, making sure that the open edges of the zipper here are lined up. 
do not try to force the zipper. The open parts of the zipper must be aligned like this, not like this, when you try to close it. Double check to make sure that both zippers are all the way closed. Now we need to lay the two zipper flaps down along the length of the zipper. It doesn't matter which one goes on top of the other, so long as whichever you choose as the top flap stays on top of the other flap from top to bottom. Now let's buckle the chamber up. Close the buckles from the outside like this. One hand on the female buckle, the other hand on the yellow strap that attaches to the male buckle here. Now push the two together. This way is much easier than trying to do it this way. Be sure to double check all the buckles. Just because you heard a click may not mean that they are all the way closed. This buckle is properly closed, this one is not. It's important to make sure all the buckles are properly closed or the chamber can be damaged. All right, now we're ready to inflate the chamber for the first time. Turn on the compressor and let's watch what happens in this time-lapse shot. We don't have a frame in the chamber yet, so it will take a few minutes longer than normal to inflate. Without a frame, inflation takes about eight minutes, but with the frame in, it takes about four minutes to reach full pressure. Now that the chamber is taking shape, let's look at some of the other parts of the chamber. As you already know, this is where the air from the compressor goes in. This gauge is where you measure the air pressure. If you watch the gauge, you can see the pressure rising. This is an extra access port which we won't be using today. This is how you can let the air out of the chamber. This brass attachment helps reduce the noise when the air comes out. On the other side, you have the outlet port where the chamber air can be released from the inside. These are two blow-off valves. These start to open at approximately 3.75 pounds per square inch and then are fully operating at 4 pounds per square inch. These valves are what keep the atmospheric pressure at 4 psi. This is another extra access port for accessories. At 3.75 psi, you can hear that the blow-off valves have opened up. Now we're at 4 psi. You've done a great job. You don't have to do anything to regulate the pressure. It will go to 4 psi and hold there without any need for adjustments. Now that we've seen the chamber inflate, let's let the air out. Open the external air outlet valve here and the chamber will deflate in a few minutes. Turn off the compressor. Once the pressure is down to 1 psi, you can disconnect the air inlet hose. The chamber deflates more slowly at lower pressures, so disconnecting the air inlet hose at 1 psi will maintain a stable deflation rate. Once the pressure gauge reads 1 quarter psi, you can open the buckles and unzip the chamber. Now let's put the frame together. Assemble it outside the chamber first to make sure that you correctly understand how it goes together. If you've followed the instructions in the manual, it should look like this, with three circular rings, two long rails across the bottom, and a long rail across the top. The rails have support sleeves in the middle. You should also have a spare sleeve and two spare rails, which will not be used today. 